What is up people? Welcome back to Twist Base. Today we're gonna be looking into sliders and I'm gonna actually not going to be doing a lot of coding today. In fact, I'm not gonna be coding at all. I'm just going uh, through my projects and show you guys one of the solution or more of the solutions I'll be using. I'm sure there's tons of different options out there like how you would do this kind of approach. But instead of coding it from scratch, I will be focusing more on uh, why I've used my approach and how it can be useful for your projects. So I think just let's get started, right? Cool. So when you've uh, opened the project and you uh, built the file, you're going to see three sliders, uh, living room, kitchen and bedroom, for example. Functionality for this app is going to be you can move the slider around. The percentage is updating. The, there's also some masking involved. And uh, notice that there's also rounded corners in here. To make it a bit more like designy or how do you call it a bit more fancy there's the option to disable a slider this also disables the pointer events uh, you can do this for all of them and one last thing the slider is always animating from the point where it started to the point where it ended and then it goes back here so there's actually yeah it's quite a lot going on you can also see some opacity changes in here for the masking uh, but let's not worry about that for now. Let's just basically start from the top of our application and I'll explain you guys what's going on uh, step by step so you get a better understanding. As you guess, you download the, the final project and just follow along. Uh, this way you can really understand what's going on. Cool. So, in the home view, uh, we have centered our home list widgets over here uh, there's this is the main scaffold of the app nothing really special happening here if you open the homeless widgets this uh, the shrink ramp is set to true of a list view builder so this is containing our main list and the reason why the shrink ramp is set to true is because if if by default it's set to false if you set it to false it's not gonna uh, like allow you to center it outside of the class or center it anywhere so we need to specify this to true if you want to move it around. The, we're not using physics, so we don't want to scroll effects on it. Uh, so you specify that by never scrollable physics. Then the item count is just going to be the three items specified in our global class. And just some padding, left, right, bottom. So 20, 20, 20 pixels here. And then we are going basically in the main uh, class, which is going to be dealing with everything, like all the special stuff. Special. Remember, we are also in a loop when we're talking about list view builders. Uh, so we're passing in the index so we can uh, like modify it, uh, keep track of what we're doing. Okay, so going to the slider container widgets. We, uh, the root of the application here is a stack widget and you're going to see the way this is built. We got slider animation, which is uh, responsible for the slider. And you're going to see like I'm not actually using a slider, right? I'm using the functionality of a slider. But what you're actually seeing in here is an animated container that is responding to the values of the slider changes. So th this is one way of doing this and it solves the problem of creating your own custom handlers that you need to override in a slider and this creates a lot more like code but because of the animated container we don't even need to uh, do that and we don't even need to create an animated controller and keep, uh, dispose those things make a stateful widget this can all just be done in a stateless widget using animated container but using the functionality of a slider. Then we got the slider values. Like I said, these will just parse in or um, store basically our values and make it uh, usable for our animated container. Then our content is containing, like I'm sure you guessed it, the text and also the percentage and the icon. And then we still got the switch, which is a Cupertino switch used for iOS. So let's start with the first one, which is the slider animation. I'll quickly explain what's going on in here. At the top, you're going to see an ignore pointer. Why are we doing this? This is because 
whenever I disable this, we want the pointer events to be null or they shouldn't allow the user to use any pointer events because remember we are able to slide it when it's enabled. So, uh, moving on, we are, um, so if you create an animated container, uh, the values that changed on the width or the height proper or any uh, transform related properties you specify, if they change, which you can change in your model, uh, they automatically animate without you having to specify the animation controller, which is really handy. So this way, uh, when we tap on the, for example, the Cupertino switch, and I'll show you if we go to the Cupertino switch, in the unchanged, we're gonna set a width with the index of our list item and a width property. And that width in here is using a sort of formula uh, where it gets the width of the, um, so when you're off, it's always gonna animate to the same width which is the width of the screen minus the box width and with box width it's something this and all the padding you've used just to animate it just at the point where you want it to be. Going back to our slider animation, uh, you can see we have a duration property in here because um, actually and this is kind of a little hack if you think about it because when we are uh, in this state, we don't want any duration to happen. So this is going to be null uh, at the moment. Otherwise, we will have a delay. The only thing when we when uh, the switch Cupertino switch is toggled, this is where we want to have a value of 500 milliseconds because otherwise we wouldn't see this animation happening in the first place. That's that. Nothing much special happening. Just some uh, conditional expressions going on. Um, that is the switch value. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Uh, the color of the box decoration. Uh, then just the border radius of the main container. Remember, we are having border radius for all of them except the bottom left corner. Then, if you see the slider values, and actually, sorry, we are using the ignore pointer in here, like I said before. Um, to make this disabled, right? We don't want everything, anything to happen in here in this state. Uh, and that's what's happening here with this conditional statements. And then um, we are using a slider team data. I mean, we are overriding slider team data. For example, in the overlay shape, if you would not do this and you would hot reload, you're gonna see there is gonna be a sort of indicator and it's gonna mess with, um, if you see the mouse at the moment, it's, gonna, it's a little bit gonna mess with where your active track point is. And uh, you can override that by setting it to null by default. If you hot reload, you can see the mouse is always where it wants to be and you don't see that overlay shape. This is our track height, uh, which is specifying, um, it's gonna be around 100 pixels. So that means we can grab it here, we can grab it here. If you wouldn't do that, uh, your track height is gonna be by default a lot, lot smaller. So you wouldn't be able to uh, use this here. And then uh, there's just some padding on the slider, uh, left and right padding, you can mess around with that. But that, this is basically just saying like, oh, the slider actually starts here, uh, starting from this point in the screen. So that's where we're using, I mean, starting from this point in the screen, really. Going all the way to here. Because we're not visually using the slider, we're setting everything we don't need to transparent. And um, these are the values. Uh, we're keeping track of the slider values. And then the unchanged property, whenever the slider changes, we are setting the width and the slider values. So that's that. Uh, going to the Cupertino switch. This is just using a, because it's stored in a sort of container box, which is like a hundred and a by a hundred. Then, 
Then this has the child of the Cupertino switch. Uh, I'm using a pink accent color. Again, uh, we have some unchanged property in here uh, for the switch values and the set width of the screen, which is responsible for animating the animated container. And then in our content property, we're gonna see a clip rect. Um, why is that? Because we are using two containers. I mean, two uh, times the content widget. This is very important because we're passing in different colors and a different index um, and we're using a clip rect uh, for this to make sure it's masking the white and the the other color and set a clip rect up you need to create a custom clipper which is specified all at the top of the class and the only thing you need to do here is make sure you overwrite uh, this is all uh, very necessary there's no way around this uh, you need to specify the get clip and you need to specify rect from left top right bottom and this is basically gonna be linked to our slider value so that's way it knows like okay where to mask almost the most important thing if you would set this to false and we would hot reload this is not gonna update because it should reclip all the time. So the, this is important as well. Set this to false. And that's that. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the main thing about it. I mean, um, if you look at the... We still got the home model. This is... I always try to keep like stuff like formulas and stuff you calculate. Created in your model class. I'm using provider for this. Um, it's kind of handy. I mean for the width value for example, we are reserving an array of uh, three spots and then um, With the formula we created here and the the start width we are uh, Animating the animated container where we want. I mean play around with the values uh, it's not that complicated really and uh, Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it if I do this, I, do this. I need more more for loops. How oh, is that?